introduce our musical guest, who was so gracious to be here tonight, and her name is Jeannie Ortega. She's anointed. Yeah. We love her. We thank her for being here. And watch this. Jeannie, take the stage. Yes, glory to God. And, oh, glory uh, to you God. Know, we, just, we, we just thank God for, for his goodness, you know, and, right. you know, his grace, his mercy, his love, you know, all the wonderful things that God does for us. You know, we need to always appreciate, you know, his grace and mercy because of grace and mercy, you know, lives 
get to be transformed. And I know my life was transformed because of grace and mercy. And I know my wife's life was transformed mm -hmm. because of grace and mercy. And Jeannie, I can tell you, God has anointed you, sister. Oh, amen. Yeah. Definitely give you a tremendous gift, you know, of worship. Praise and worship is so awesome. And I think a lot of times, you know, people miss praise and worship and understanding what that's really all about. And that's seeking into God, you know, and seeking after God, you know, when praise and worship. You know, when praise and worship, when you praise and worship God, you're giving yourself, you're yielding yourself into him. So I just want to say thank you for that uh, wonderful song. And, you know, we just want to share, we want you to share tonight about um, your great testimony because we know God brings us from somewhere. Amen. You know, it's not always been holy, holy thy ever. You know, I tell people <laughs> sure about <hasn't>. my life, <laughs> it wasn't holy, holy thy ever, mm -hmm. but being able to find the cross and what God has done in your life. Um, share your testimony with, um, with the folks tonight here that are watching and the folks that's watching all over the world. Okay, Daryl. Well, I want to start off by saying the grace of God is sufficient. You know, um, I started off growing up in Brooklyn, New York, young, young little girl, and um, with big dreams. You know, came from a um, very fiery kind of background. You know, my parents and tempers flare and. Um, a lot of times there was war at home, you know, and I didn't know where I was going to find my escape. You know, I needed <clears throat> something to just kind of forget my current state. And, you know, I know it's hard when parents hear their children say that. And, um, you know, I definitely felt alone and I definitely felt a lot of things that other youth feel today. Um, I found that solace in music. The Lord used it as an instrument for me. I was seven years old and already thinking of suicide. Mm -hmm. um, always thinking I was the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to get emotional again, but um, it's okay. It's okay. You know, I just, you know, I guess the children sometimes you take the blame for yourself. Why can't I make it better? Why is, you know, why is Daddy and Mommy fighting? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> and um. That's where it started, thank you. That's all right. <laughs> That's where it started, and, and I kind of just went on my journey running, and I started to, to go into music and, you know, enter the music business at 11, <laughs> yeah. and I dealt with the snakes before I found, you know, actual real people, and I started doing secular music. I wanted to fulfill all these things that my flesh felt like that needed to fulfill. I wanted to be a superstar, so, you know. Less was better at that time, and that's what they tell you, you know. Yes. They, they give you these rules at such a tender age, you know, like a piece of meat. And Did you ever feel like um, you said you channeled yourself into that music? Is that where you were certain to find your identity, some sort of identity? Why music? What, what was in the music that, well, that drew you to the music? It was, and that's why I said God used it as an instrument, because... If probably if it wasn't for the music at the time, I probably would have did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And the power that I saw music had and the impact that it had on me at such a tender age really made me feel like I want to do that. Mm -hmm. right. I want to be able to help some little girl in my state, you know, and, and I, 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 had, I went on a journey trying to do that. And while I was in it, because everybody's pulling you this way and that way, you get lost in the hype. And I know... Oh, yeah, yeah of course. I, 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 I know you we have a witness. I know you <laughs> well, we can relate. Really. You can look at yeah, me, a little you know, bit. And I know exactly what, you, what you're referring to. And, you know, I, I'm a true witness, you know, of that, uh, of that lifestyle. And, you know, people pulling at you all kind of ways and, you know, believing that they're your friends, but they're truly not, you know. But it was only by the blood and the restoration that God bought to me Amen. that I was able to see the truth, you know. And, and I, I can relate to what you're saying because of your life, and you had to get a taste of what that world was really like. It's but true. you know what? They, 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 they eat you up. They do. You know, they suck it's you up, empty. and then they spit you out. Exactly. But, you know, God doesn't do that in our yeah. life. And, you know, that's the most important and thing that we... He kept us. Yeah, he, yes. yeah, exactly. He kept us. And, you know... That's a, that's a remarkable testimony that you have because you're young. 
and, and, and you can have a tremendous impact on young people, young ladies, your age, for them to be able to believe and see for themselves mm -hmm. that God is still in the business of blessing and turning lives around. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Jeannie, you tell us about the turning point. What was the turning point? You were this big R&B, secular music, yes. you know, finding your way in the world. What brought you out of the world and into a relationship with Jesus Christ? Well, at that time, I was this big pop R&B star. I was on the charts. I was doing the red carpet. I had friends galore. Amazing. Um, and God got my attention. The carpet was pulled from under me. I lost my record deal. Uh, my family broke up at that time. Um, my friends were missing. I was in a relationship that went sour, and I was alone. And when I was alone, who was there? What was left? Mm -hmm. And it was God. Mm -hmm. He never left me. I've always had a love for God, always had, you know, I was living that one foot in, one foot out life. Yeah. And, um, you know, I really thought, oh, you know, God, oh, I love you. It was always, but I had never surrendered my life fully to him, but he never gave up on me. He had his hands on me. Yeah. And when I was faced with that, when I was faced to just look at myself in the mirror and the glitz and the glamour and the lights were off, God was there, and he dealt with me. You know, it was beautiful. I, I began a journey of just me and the Lord. Yes. Everything was taken away from me so that I could see, so that I can hear clearer. It was, the, it was the best time of my life, my turning point with God. You know, it's, it, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. It's, he's, he sticks closer than a friend, than a brother. He is truly, like, he's amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's, 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 such, that's, that's great, because you know what? You, you, you kind of remind me of me. You know, I had to go through a stripping with God. Yeah. You know, to be stripped from, you know, the fame and the fortune and the lifestyle and, and the greatness that we all think we are when we you know, a blessed like that sometime in a worldly manner. And, and until we can actually look at ourselves and see the truth and, and see who God is in our life and fall on our face and cry out to God and ask God to forgive us because he's called us for greater things, not for the world, but to help other souls. And that's what he has done in your life. He's called you for greater things than you can ever imagine. You know, you, you think about the R&B and the records and the red carpets, you know, I understand all that, winning World Series and championships, and we yeah. think, wow, you know, this is it. Yeah. But there's nothing greater. Nothing. Nothing greater. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing is greater until you find Jesus yeah. and find out what the blood of Jesus means in your life. Yeah. You know, everybody has to find him for himself. And every man finds him for himself, you'll find freedom and liberty in it. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Jeannie, we're so grateful to have you here. We are so grateful to have you here. And your testimony is a powerful testimony, especially to this next generation. Um, they can relate to you. Sometimes we get up here and they think we're just too old. Like we don't know what's up, you know, but we do. <laughs> this, is a real, this is as real as it gets. We keep it real, right? That's right. <laughs> we would love it if you could entertain some questions from our audience to be able to give this generation a voice. We want to know what's going on in the lives of this generation. Okay. Would you be happy to do that of for course. us? Yes. Fantastic. Okay. We'd like to take a question from our audience right now. Mm. Hi, Jeannie. Hi. How you doing? My name is Anthony. Uh, quick question. How did your music influence you growing up and how are you changing it right now? It's a great question. After, um, after having my feet in the secular world and knowing what fame like that is like um, and realizing that I was still empty, I was still broken, I was still lost, I was still hurting, um, I decided to take my what God gave me and use it the way it helped me. You know, I want, I want to be able to minister to people through song. I want to be able to relate 
with people through song. I want them to know that there's better, there's more in this life than, than just the little things that the TV shows sometimes, yes. you know? Yes. So Amen. that's a new direction for me. It'll be inspirational, it'll be uplifting. It'll be things that, you know, you want to feel good, then you can put it on. You yeah. know, it won't be depressing. It won't be, it'll be something to uplift. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Great question. We'll take another question from the audience. John, and, Hi, John. Uh, you guys were talking about the enemy, uh, how he comes at you in all different ways through Facebook, through MySpace, and uh, nowadays these kids got so many things that are going against them. How do we all fight the enemy, you know, in our weakest moments and our trials and tribulations? Because as much as you have God in your life at times, you know, there's times where you're struggling and the enemy comes at you in many different ways. So it's a general question to you guys. Well, I would always say, I would always say like this, uh, that the devil is always going to be busy, you know? And, you know, what I've learned, you know, is to press through is you don't quit. You don't give up, you know, no matter what. And I think that's where most people miss the miracle of God in their life, you know, because they give up before the miracles happen in their life. Mm -hmm. And once you get a taste of God's miracles, then you'll know not to give up, you know, because the world's going to always tell you to give up. That's just the way the world is. The world system is always going to tell you to give up, throw in the towel. This is not going to work. Or, yeah, or I could do this and I could do it this way and that way. But I've learned over my years and my, my years and my experience, you know, through my lifetime from coming out of the world and, and finding Christ and knowing that Christ is the rock. Because I want, one thing I've learned, if you build your house on the sand, when the wind comes, it's going to blow it away. That's right. But if you build it on the rock and you build it on the truth, the truth is going to stand. Amen. Thank you, thank you. We're going to take another question from our audience. Hi, my name is Eddie Perez, and I'm from the Bronx. I, I'd like to thank you guys for showing up. Um, unfortunately, I got two daughters, 14, 11, and they're going through the struggles. One of them is failing in school, and um, I accepted the law as my personal savior a year ago, and the enemy is trying to attack, but I'm trying to set the example. And she reminds me of you a lot. She likes to sing, and, but she's going through the struggles. What can I do to, to I, I was trying to, I don't want to force her to come to this, to the studio, but I try my best. My question to you is how can I, I I'm trying to bring her away from, from the world and, and all the bad things. We live in the Bronx, there's a lot of negativity. Mm -hmm. And she likes to sing, and she, she reminds me of you a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I would say is love conquers all. Mm. Love conquers all. You know, and, and it, it is true when sometimes dealing with the younger generation, and, you know, kids don't want to hear what their parents got to say or just like, leave me alone, you know, don't put that church thing on me. But love conquers all. You know, let her see Christ in you. If she's not willing to go to the church, right now, then let her see Christ to you. Wow, daddy's changed. You know, daddy, I want to be more like him. Amen. I guarantee you the Lord will draw her. Amen. The Lord will draw her. So be encouraged and don't give up on your children. Trust me, I was just like that. Amen. I was just like that for years, Thank for you. years. Thank you, Praise appreciate God. it. Okay. We'd like to take another question from the audience. Um, how you doing, Jeannie? My name is Leroy. Um, I wanted to know, do you have any advice for the youth out there, like myself, that uh, are trying to stray away from peer pressure? Like, they, they, they don't want to be influenced by other people, like their friends and whatnot? Yes. Yeah. It's very, very important. You know, your, who your company is can definitely, you know, pull you. And this is what I was saying earlier, and Daryl was saying, you know, there's definitely a tugging. And if the enemy wants you, when you, especially when you're chosen, he's going to go hard. It's about a conditioning. You know, you want to stay away from the things that you know you're going to give in to, the things that you know kind of tempt you. you got to really condition yourself. Study, deal with the things in the Bible that you know that you need help with. 
there'll be certain things I dealt with anger. I dealt with a lot of unforgiveness. I dealt with, a, you know, a lot of filthy mouth. I had a filthy mouth. And I, I went through the Bible and I dealt with the things that needed to be dealt with. So just condition yourself. Watch positive movies. Listen to Christian music. Deal with people who are more positive. You know, just you have to, it, it's, you got to be on guard. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We have time for one more question. Um, this question is for Janine. I wanted to ask, um, what kind of things did you do to um, fit in with other people, and like, what kind of advice do you have for you to avoid it? Um, well, I will, I will tell you, I was always cut from a different cloth. <laughs> so I, I was always wanting to like, kind of stand out more than fit in. But um, when you are dealing with a kind of, you know, when, when, you, when you're confident, when you're confident, you know, I heard Tracy talking backstage and she actually mentioned confidence and it's so true. Confidence is what kind of makes you stand out. Rather than you having to follow people, people will want to follow you. And I, I definitely encourage that. You know, it says be strong and very courageous. You know, so that's what the Bible says. So, you know, just be bold, be courageous and, and make a difference in a positive way. And people will, they'll be like, you know, what's up with that guy? You know, what's, what is it about him? And then you can, you can turn around and say, well, it's Jesus, you know? Amen. 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 Praise Amen. 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 You know, the Holy Spirit is putting on my heart. This is my favorite time, the testimonies, hearing from our young generation. We need to hear so we know where to go. And the Holy Spirit's putting on my heart to talk to the parents for a moment. These things are not easy to hear. Um, we have a lot of households that are out of order. The enemy is coming for the household. That's what's wrong with this whole, this whole generation today, and I believe our country today. The enemy is coming for our men. He's coming for the head of the household. He wants to take you out with every temptation, every desire, every wicked thing, everything that he can possibly tear you away from your family as head of the household, spiritual head of the household first. If he can get you, men, he can get everything underneath you. Right. Let your family see Christ in you. If you don't know Christ, you need to go to Christ because Christ can heal any crisis in your family. That's where it starts. There is hope. Be encouraged. We can turn the situation around by doing our part and through the power of Christ. Be encouraged.